my approach to trying to master this happened in a very linear, what I thought was lo a logical way of practicing guitar and trying to master guitar and doing the things that I wanted to do. Okay? So let's go through the process of what you probably think makes perfect common sense, and then I'm going to show you how it's not so effective. So what I'm going to say is, is sort of counterintuitive. It, it, it doesn't, it's not consistent with what a lot of people think is common sense or just sound judgment or the way to approach anything. Okay. Most of us try to get ourselves to think in a very logical way and take a step-by-step -step process. Okay? We approach musicianship or music or playing guitar like um, you know, some toy that we have to assemble for our kids, where there's step one and step two and step three and step four. Right? And we know that we can't, when we're assembling a toy or a swing set in the backyard, we can't do step four before we've done step one, two, and three. Right? It's going to be problems if you skip those steps. And what we do is we try to take that same philosophy and apply it to guitar playing. And it doesn't work very well. I mean, it, it, it can work, but it takes a really long time. Okay, so mastering your guitar and building a swing set ain't the same thing. Okay, and the process is very different, or should be very different, if you want to get more results in a much shorter time. Okay, what I'm going to suggest for you to do and to think about is to approach your guitar playing and musicianship in general in a geometric way, where you're going to work on things in a in a three-dimensional where you're going, to hit, you're going to hit problem areas from this side, from this side, from this side, from this side. Okay, so let me take you through the process of what usually happens for most guitar players. We start out, and we're not very good at whatever it is that we're trying to learn or master or apply. And what we do is we try to master that part that's giving us a hard time. And we might spend some hours on it, we might spend days on it, we might spend weeks or months, or sometimes we may even spend years on trying to master certain things that are important to us. Okay? And anything that's really challenging is going to take a long time, right? I mean, you know from personal experience, you're not going to usually master things in an hour or two. It could take you know, weeks, months, years, whatever. Right? So what usually happens is this. We start out, we're not very good. So we think we must focus on this, master this, and then we'll start to feel good about ourselves. And the common piece of advice that we get is we're going to start off really slow and we're gradually going to build up the speed. And then one day I'll be able to crank the metronome all the way to the top and I'll be able to play this fluidly and I'll have it down and everything will be great. Okay. Well, if you do that, you're going to find yourself stumbling once you reach that goal. Because the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to finally have mastered whatever the technical thing is or the music theory thing is or whatever it is that you're working on. And then you're going to realize that, whoa, I can physically do it, but I really can't apply it. So I might be able to burn up and down this lick or this phrase or this arpeggio or whatever or play this cool solo, but as soon as it comes time for me to get on my guitar and sit in this chair right here, and I'm going to play some chords for you, and I'm going to say, okay, take what you can do, take what you've now finally spent the last two years mastering, or the last four months mastering, and play it with me and apply it in this context, in this key, over these chords. What usually happens, it all falls apart, it doesn't sound good. Okay? And what happens, what the worst part is that we, who are no longer beginners, because we've now climbed this mountain and have achieved this goal, we feel like beginners. We're so frustrated because we've worked so hard to be able to do something, but now we're stuck on something that seems seemingly simple, like actually using it. Very, very common. And although you may not be a beginner, you can certainly feel like one when you can't apply something that you know. And I know that many of you, probably all of you have been there. I've certainly been there thousands of times with various things over the 22 years of my guitar playing. Okay, so what do we do next? We think, we take two, one of two approaches. We either say to ourselves, well, I just need more time and I need to get more experience. And with more time and more experience, I will eventually learn how to apply these things and they'll come more naturally. That's one approach. The other approach, the better one, would be to actually practice applying all the things that we know into some type of musical context. Okay? So let's assume you take the second path 
And you remember, we've already completed the first pass in our, in our linear thinking here of, I'm gonna master this technique or whatever it is in isolation, and then I'm going to now apply it. Now we've come this far, and it could be months or years later, or at least weeks later. <laughs> then, the next step, or the next stumbling block, is you realize that, okay, I got it down, I can play it, I know where to use it, but I can't integrate it with the other skills that I have. This is extremely common. And if there's anything that's gonna stop you, if you're a good guitar player, the, the biggest stumbling block that's going to, going to prevent you from becoming a great guitar player is going to be a lack of an inability to integrate the skill which you just mastered and now can apply, to integrate that with all of your other skills. This is extremely common. So what usually happens? If I said, come up here, we're gonna to play together, and you're gonna you're gonna play this phrase, this lick, this arpeggio, whatever, that you've now conquered, you now understand. When I play the F chord, you know where to put that arpeggio to make it fit this F chord. Okay, so you're past that. But now I'm gonna say, after you play that arpeggio, I want you to play some, you know, some harmonic minor scale. I want you to play that lick or you know, whatever or related thing, right after, without stopping, without a pause, it should be smooth and seamless. And it should sound as if you intended to musically have this arpeggio flow into that uh, scale or whatever the next thing, the next phrase you're gonna be. Now what happens is, players usually can't do that. They can't do it smoothly. And everything falls apart. And they, what happens is to deal with that problem, they start making musical compromises. Either they'll start altering the arpeggio, like maybe they don't play the last note, they just hold out. And if this is the arpeggio, instead of ending up on this note, they might do things like play this one and hold it out to sort of buy themselves more time to think about what to do next or how to connect it next because they're, they're trying to get that little extra time so that they can go to do that next because they, they can't get to the two things together. Okay, These are just examples. We can get all kinds of uh, different examples in which this would apply to. All right, Or let's assume that we do make the arpeggio correctly. We've got it nailed. Then we start making musical compromises on the next phrase. Maybe instead of starting the, the next phrase right on the downbeat, right on beat one where we intended it, we start on the end of one or on beat two where we slide into the note because we can't get there with our pick in time or we change the fingering. We do something to hack our way through this not so smooth connection between this idea and this idea. It's a very common thing. And very often, because I've just been listening to lots and lots and lots of music for a long, long time, I can usually spot when listening to someone play how well their, their techniques are integrated together because I can usually hear between one phrase and the next and the next and the next all this glue. And the glue is this compromised beginnings or endings of phrases that are not yet integrated. Again, the linear process generally goes like this. We want to do something we can't, right? We go, we master our phrase, our lick, our technique. Then after that, we work on application. We work to apply what we're learning. Then we go into the integration phase, and if we actually are proactive and practice integrating techniques together, uh, that's going to take time. That's a, good, that, that's a good thing we want to do. Um, and then the next thing would be to make better musical choices so that when you are putting that arpeggio or whatever the phrase is, that it makes sense musically. It actually fits into the context of the track, the song, and it didn't just sound like you just stuck it there just because you can't, you know what I mean?